Hey, what's up guys? It's Tucker here from Electric Cycle Rider. Do you recognize this bike? Well, you should, because if you don't, you've probably been living under a rock. This is the Stark Varg, and I finally get the opportunity to test this thing out. I'm very excited. I'm gonna take you guys along for the ride. I've got my GoPro, we've got a bunch of cameras, and we're gonna go do some laps here at Golf MX in Barcelona. So, all yours. <clears throat> all right. First ride on the Stark. That's not full power. <laughs> I know you're messing with me. Immediately goes out. That's not full power. Okay, okay. No. So what mode is that though? That, that was at 20 horsepower. <laughs> I was like, man, this rolls on really slow. <laughs> okay, so now you have the real power. Okay. <laughs> Engine brake is by default at what we start normally, that is 80. 80? 80 out of 300. Okay. okay. That is more or less what everyone starts with, and then like they, what, we can go up or down depending on what you feel. Okay. That feels better. <laughs> So, once they set me up with the true power of the bike, I headed out on the track and started to put my first laps in on the Varg. Now, I would be lying if I said I wasn't slightly disappointed to learn that our test bikes were all configured with the standard 60 horsepower tune. That disappointment lasted only about two corners though. Even in the 60 horsepower mode, this thing is an absolute animal. The 60 horsepower mode is still producing approximately 5 horsepower more than the fastest internal combustion motocross bikes made today. Now, I know you guys are here for my first ride impressions, and we will get there, but since we're on the topic of specifications, let's take a deeper look at the nitty gritty of the Varg. The bike can be ordered in two different power modes, a 60 horsepower standard version and an 80 horsepower alpha version. The inverter on the Varg is capable of putting out 50 to 100 kilowatts of power depending on the version and mode selected. The battery features a patented honeycomb design inside a magnesium case. It's air-cooled, and it utilizes 21700 lithium-ion cells, giving it a whopping 6 kilowatt hours of capacity. The Varg has some impressive mapping parameters, which you'll be able to utilize through their Vehicle Control Unit, or VCU, which is essentially a military-grade smartphone that wirelessly connects to the bike. Through their app, Stark is claiming up to 100 different ride mode settings and unlimited flexibility when customizing each mode. This includes power curve, traction control, engine braking, and a virtual flywheel. Being that the test bike is still a pre-production model, this customization feature on the VCU was still unfortunately in beta mode. In the suspension department, the Varg is fitted with a KYB fork and shock with a triple adjuster for changing high and low compression and rebound. Stark fitted the bike with Brembo hydraulic brakes mated to Galfer rotors. You can order the bike with your rear brake as a lever on the handlebar, where you would normally find a clutch on a traditional gas bike, or the time-honored location at your right foot. Stark claims their frame is the lightest motocross frame ever made. They achieved this by incorporating their chromoly steel frame design into the battery and motor. The frame is mated to a 7000 grade aluminum subframe, and 7075 T6 forged triple clamps. There are also some really cool bits on the bike, like the innovative chain adjuster and foot pegs that are unique to the bike. 
The Stark Varg features a base MSRP of $12,900 for the 60 horsepower version and $13,900 for the 80 horsepower alpha version. Riders can select a 19 inch rear wheel if they're going the motocross route or an 18 inch if the bike will see more single track than airtime. All right, with that out of the way, let's get back on the bike. So remember when I mentioned that our test bikes are the 60 horsepower version? Well, after a handful of laps, it was clear that even in the 60 horsepower mode, I was repeatedly breaking the rear tire loose when exiting corners and not being very efficient on the bike. What's easy to forget with electric dirt bikes like the Stark Varg is that the gearbox and clutch are essentially eliminated from the equation. The result is that you're always in the perfect gear and always in the meat of the power band. It's not a game of manipulating the bike to create power, it's a game of training your throttle hand to take all of that instantaneous power and redirect it into traction to the ground. Just stop and imagine this for a second. The bike pulls through what can only be described as first through fifth gear, all within the twist of the throttle. It takes a lot of finesse to control all of that acceleration within millimeters of actuation in your throttle hand. Or at least it did for me. So I actually did the unthinkable and I had Stark decrease the power by 10% and add some freewheel to the engine braking to simulate more of a two stroke kind of feel. These modifications to the mapping made the bike not only easier to ride, but more efficient. I was able to be less forgiving with my throttle hand, and I still had more than plenty of power to make my way around the track. So, those of you that ordered the 60 horsepower version and thought you might be missing out, don't be. This bike is damn fast. The KYB suspension is no doubt some of the best equipment on the market. My test bike was sprung for a rider over 20 pounds heavier than myself, so naturally I found it to be a bit stiff. I made some adjustments throughout the day and found some settings that worked well for me, but I can only imagine my enthusiasm growing for the setup when properly sprung and dialed in for my weight. Having spent adequate time aboard a KTM Freeride EXC, which utilizes its rear brake as a left lever on the handlebar, I came prepared knowing that I personally dislike the rear brake on my handlebar. It works on light bikes like the Suron and the Cake, but I just can't get comfortable with a rear handlebar brake on a bike over 200 pounds. I ran the Varg with a traditional rear brake lever on the right peg, and you'll be comforted to know that it functions just as you'd expect from any traditional dirt bike. For those of you that know this channel, you know that I love gas bikes too. So I'm not going to start proclaiming that electric dominates gas in every scenario. Stark Future, however, is taking a strong stance against the gas bikes. They are so confident that their bike is superior, they allowed us to pick any color of 454 stroke to go out and compare the Varg to. I chose the Husqvarna FC450, which, to be completely honest, is an amazing bike. But there are some noticeable differences when you ride the bikes back to back. The Husky definitely handled corners with ease and felt precise. It was only when I went back out on the Varg that I noticed how much easier it was to point the electric bike in a specific direction. The Varg felt direct and resolute with the line I chose to direct it toward, which translated to my confidence to carry more momentum through the corner. It was only after this comparison that I noticed the 450 felt as though I was having to somewhat fight the bike into my line choice. This could be attributed to the fact there is no rotating mass inside the electric motor. However, it's without question that the chassis complemented this trait and allowed me to feel like I could change direction on the bike with confidence. In the chop and the straightaways, the bike feels planted and direct, which translated to my confidence to carry momentum in those sections as well. The Varg tips the scales at a stout 242.5 pounds. You definitely feel this when you go to lift the bike up onto a stand, but this lack of rotating mass in the motor that I just mentioned makes the Varg feel like it went on a diet when you're riding it. 
This is a trait that is noticeable on all the electric dirt bikes I've ridden, and the Varg is no exception. It rides way lighter than the scale reads. Battery life. This is something I was most eager to evaluate, but due to the nature of our test and the fact that the bike is a pre-production model that has elements in beta mode, we couldn't do a true battery range test here. I do have some findings that I'm going to dive into, but I'm going to save that for another video and not get too far into the weeds here. What I will say right here is that the range appears to be better than most electric dirt bikes that I've ridden, Alta included, but more on that later. I had the unique opportunity to get out and ride with Anton and Paul, the two founders of Stark Future, so we took the bikes out for some impromptu enduro riding. Being the off-road rider that I am, this is the application you'll likely see my bike in, so I was pumped to take the bike into the woods for a little bit. That's fun, man. Nice little uphill here. I swear I'll show you guys. Still go up here. It's, All right. This is so good. Man. <laughs> it's so good. So Crazy good, man. Speed, not, not really go fast, but just don't stop. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice. There's a track up there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good, man fighting the bike and trying to get the revs up. Yeah. Right, there's just no lag, it's just yeah. there. Yeah, exactly. You need a little more, you get a little more. Exactly. Yeah. Some other things worth noting are the bike comes equipped with a 3.3 kilowatt charger capable of charging the bike between one to two hours depending on the particulars of your outlet. Being this is a European motorcycle, the charger is designed to benefit from the extra juice provided by the 220 volt outlets that are common in this part of the world. For riders here in the US, to get the most current from your charger, it's also recommended that you utilize 220 volts. If this isn't possible, the bike can still be charged via 110 by way of an adapter, but you should expect the charge time to increase as a result. So the real takeaway here is that it's favorable to have options. Some may not be convinced that electric is the best option for their application, and that's totally okay. While Stark Future may be taking a firm stance against the gas competition, I like to think variety is the spice of life. So for the guy in the comments section barking about electric not being better for the environment, you're not going to hear me taking that stance. So please stop being so defensive about your two stroke. Go ride the bike that you want to ride, and I genuinely hope you have a lot of fun doing so. We should be celebrating the fact that this is a very capable electric motocross bike, and it will soon be available to the public. If it helps keep our threatened riding areas open, introduces new riders to the sport, or just injects fresh enthusiasm into a seasoned rider, I find those all to be positive attributes for preserving the sport that we love. And that's something I think this bike is fully capable of.